In today's video, we're gonna make a website in Framer with their AI tools. We're talking using wireframe to prompt a brand new site for us, adding a little bit of styles ourselves, and then we're gonna add even more with the new workshop plugin so that we have a finished responsive landing page by the end of the video. Let's dive in. If you're new to Framer, first, you'll need a free Framer account. I have a link in the description. Just click that and sign up. Then you can create a new project and you're all caught up for this video. So first, let's go to the top left corner, select insert, and here we have the wireframer. So we can select that and this will allow us to enter a prompt and AI will create a wireframe for us here in Framer. So the prompt that I went with is a simple landing page with an image grid to show my work, a project list section, and a call to action contact section. So we're gonna hit generate. Now you'll see as it's generating this, it's creating all three breakpoints for us. So this will be responsive right from the start. So you can see what all it has generated for us, a nice hero section, an image grid. We've got some of our projects here with the year corresponding. I don't like this section, we're gonna replace this and I don't like the footer. So the good news is we can go over here and we can ask Framer to update this. So I wanna remove this contact section and I wanna add a new section and I just want a simple heading, a button instead of this form. So we'll generate that. And that is much better than the contact form for a simple landing page. Just easily clicking this to contact me is much better. Finally, I wanna refine this footer. We don't need all these pages for this video. I just want a simple single page. So I'm gonna remove these links. So all I want here is just the simple copyright text instead of these links. And there we go, a nice simple footer. So if we take a look at this page, I think everything else here we can work with. So of course, just like anything in Framer, now we can select anything, edit it, and change it around exactly how we want. Now to take this from a wireframe to a website, pretty quick here in Framer. First, let's swap over the theme to a dark theme. Now we've got that, let's update the layout, add some images, my logo, and update a little bit of the typography copy text. And with those quick five to 10 minute changes, we actually have a decent looking website, pretty minimalistic, but this is what I'm going for. And if we preview this, we can see that it has these breakpoints to make sure that it looks nice and responsive on every screen size. So in just a minute, we're gonna take this a step further and improve this website using the new Framer Workshop plugin right after this break. If you're tired of designing from scratch on all of your new projects, meet. 8-Point. 8-Point is an ever-growing design system for Figma. 8-Point has a soft four-point grid to make sure everything aligns properly, customizable components to give you control in your designs, and variables to swap themes with ease. If a design system sounds like something you might be interested in, you can check it out at 8-Point.io. That's 8PT.io. And right now we have a Father's Day sale going on. You don't need a promo code at all. It's just already applied. It's like 38% off, I think. Link for 8-point at the top of the description. With all that said, let's get back to the video. All right, now on to Workshop. And this is where we can start to spice up the website a little bit with custom components. Now I have a full video on Workshop and I'll link that on the screen now if you're interested. Basically, you can enter a prompt and it will code a custom component right here in Framer. So as you can imagine, sky's the limit when it comes to what this thing could do pretty much. 
We have some examples here, like we can have a text scrambler or a scroll progress. So let's do something to add to what we currently have. I think it would be nice if we had some animated text saying some other things other than just UI and web design. So let's prompt that. So let's make a component that types out a word and then backspaces it. It's pretty common on websites. And I want to have text control over that so I can change the font. And then I want to have four different word options so I can put up to four in. And let's see what we get with that. You'll notice over here in the top left, it's going to start generating the code. You'll actually see just a little snippet of that run through. And of course, I don't know if I've said this already in the video, but with AI prompting, sometimes you need to redo things because you don't get the exact thing that you're wanting. Try to be as specific as you can with your prompt. That way you get the ideal result. But it may take a few tries to get exactly what you want. In this case, this is looking pretty good already. So if we select this, we have an array here and it looks like we can set the different words. We even have a typing speed, deleting speed, and a pause time. So didn't even ask for that control, but that's nice to have. We can change the type and we have the text color, the cursor color, and we can hide and show the cursor. I think I like the cursor being active. That's a really cool component. So let's add it to our design. So if I go over to my layers, you can see we have this vertical stack and I've just dragged the typewriter component into that. So first let's set the text color to this gray color because we're gonna be replacing this second line with this. And I'm also gonna copy the text size and weight. So since we only have one word backspacing, I'm gonna select the component, hold shift and grab this text line. And we're gonna throw that into a stack and then we're gonna turn it to a horizontal stack. We want it to be centered. And then distribution, let's put them center with zero pixel gap. And then we have this current text set to fill. So let's change that to fit content. And now you'll see it's touching really nicely, which is what we want. And we wanna simulate a space here. So now we can add our gap. So I'm just gonna drag that till it looks pretty good. Probably eight pixels. And now what we can do is I'm gonna take off the word design here. So right now the whole text line is moving, which I don't really want. Uh, so I'm just gonna add a minimum width of something that's larger than all of the typing, which 220 I think is larger than all of the typed out words. Looks like it is. Uh, so that will prevent this from moving. I'm actually gonna shrink this down to maybe 210. That looks better. So if we preview this, we have a responsive website with a custom coded component, all of which was done with AI tools here in Framer. So that's gonna do it for today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you give it a like, subscribe for more design related content, just like this. And as always, have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.